Hey everybody, welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. Make note that these episodes are archive episodes. It means that they have come from previously recorded podcasts that we've done over the last few years. But they are still very relevant, very necessary, and very provoking in the process of true discipleship. So take a listen to this series, and I hope that it will truly encourage you to go deeper with Him. Enjoy this series on our developmental maturity markers. And by all means, my friends, let's mature. The hour that we live in is calling for it so very, very deeply. And to the pleasure of our Father, I pray that it happens. Love you all. Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCready, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. Today's episode is going to challenge you to look at, are you hitting your developmental maturity markers as the sons of God? Or are you allowing trauma to continue to disrupt your development? Take a listen today, share it with others, and I pray that it provokes you deeper into your maturing process with the Father. Hey everybody, it's great to be together today. Did you know that endurance brings development? And that can sound, you know, pretty encouraging to us. What if I say, though, that suffering brings forth sonship? Because I'm really saying the same thing. Right now, right today, what we need is to make sure that trauma in any form or shape does not continue to trump the day. That it does not continue to be what is literally triggering everyone, which means that when trauma keeps ruling the day, whether it's your current trauma or you're watching someone else go through something and it's triggering all of your unresolved conflict and trauma, what that means is that there is no real true development happening because trauma disrupts development. Trauma disturbs development. And this is why the enemy would love to keep people, especially the sons of the living God who are in their time and season to be showing up, manifesting, so that they can serve all of those who are not yet sons. We are sent to those who don't really like us, don't really want us, didn't really ask for us. Don't you love that assignment? But we are sent to those who may have a God consciousness. They may be seeking God, but they're not really sure where to find Him. They may need um, God, but not be aware of it. And yet we are sent to those Not so much because they are seeking God, but because God is seeking them. And if we are his sons, then we are on assignment sent by the Father to those that he wants. It's not about whether or not, oh, they're so hungry for God. Is that God is longing for them. So when you see that big picture and you realize that as God has tended to you and God brings you to maturity, then you are able to be one who is sent out apostolic, that you are sent out in your everyday life, that we would be able to say, if you've seen us, you've seen the Father, that our endurance is what brings development to us. So if we're ditching out, if we're getting caught up in every everything else, all right, 
if you will, in a lower form, in a lesser form, then it's being hijacked, if you will, and the father is not getting what it is that he desires. Because what he loves is to send out sons who have come to know him to be a mouthpiece to those who are about to know him. So I think I'm going to focus in today on what I call developmental maturity markers because we've got to really look at and, and see, are we really growing up as sons? Are we really taking hold of the life of Jesus inside of us? And are we now allowing his life to become more evident, more developed, more mature? Not just living by principles and leadership, uh, you know, things. Uh, sometimes I just get at a loss for, you know, the right, <laughs> the right word. Because principles to me oftentimes are things that, um, although this may not be what it's meant to be communicating, it is what gets communicated, uh, is that they're like more just like intellectual thoughts that we're attempting to accomplish on our own. But real leadership, real living, real maturity has to actually be the life of Jesus, the very nature of Jesus inside of you getting developed, like in your real life. So I just want to take a look at developmental markers in Jesus's life because you know Jesus never never stepped out from real dependency experiential dependency upon his father and that is why he never got stuck in his development he never shut down he never numbed out he never went into denial he never went into excuse making and blaming so, my friends, and we can live that way, too. If we can't really live like Jesus, I'm not really sure what the whole Christianity thing is about. Because when you look at it from their point of view, they came for you to deliver you out of Adam back into Christ so that you could be made new, so that you could live 100% compatible with them, so that then their way of life would be your way of life, freely chosen. And then that would be developed, and then you would actually live that out as an expression of them and as an extension of their authority. All right, so if that's where we're called to really live and the means by which we're called to really live, then we've got to get on with that. So I want you to understand that the enemy then will literally try to harness anything, anything in your past, your present, so as to shut down the future of what God is after. And he really doesn't care by what means it happens. Um, he'll, he'll do it by you just trying to be a nice, good person. Uh, the enemy will do it by keeping you in constant, unresolved conflict so that he can continuously rub raw your places of bitterness and your places of resentment and envy and jealousy. He will keep you in a place of what I call creature worship, where you are still trying to get from people what only God can give you, what only God was ever meant to give you. Because if you keep clawing after it from people as your source, or you keep demanding it of yourself as your source, you will never, ever mature into the son to him that you're called to be, be ye male or female. Remember, we are born of spirit before we are gender. We are spirit. And everything that we receive from the Lord is in spirit. And then it has the opportunity to break out of spirit and go into soul and body to where we live out as the fully maturing sons of God. So this has to have its has to have a means and a way by which it can actually begin to be um, incorporated, if you will, into your everyday life. That's called discipleship. But we've missed that, and we've missed the, the development that comes through God's um, son-raising process called discipleship, because we've made it all kinds of things. So I want to provoke you today in developing your personal uh, culture of discipleship in the interior, in the um, inner life, the inner man. 
You see, that's why you're not an inner child. You're the inner man. And the inner man is born again and then continues to grow and to mature because of the love of the Father, the atmosphere of His presence within you, that you're able to truly learn His ways. Um, He sends Holy Spirit to be one with you so as to raise you because you're not left to yourself to figure this out, nor are you just left at the mercy of those around you. So first and foremost, He has to bring you to Himself. So when we look at the developmental maturity markers of Jesus, we begin to see part of the way that we're called to live. So, um, you know, this is, this is very, very key. And so let me just get into one of these. All right, remember now, trauma disrupts and disturbs development. And when you're traumatized, you're so overwhelmed, you are made to feel so powerless that you start surviving rather than developing. You start hunkering down inside. Now, you may still go to school, go to college, get a job, look professional. You may try to overcome all of that um, by, you know, you might have grown taller, uh, but that doesn't mean that the life of Christ in you has been developing. It means you're surviving. And whatever you used to survive, my friends, eventually is going to try to kill you. Okay, it's like I was an alcoholic for many, many years. And, you know, I could say, uh, thank God for alcohol that kept me alive until it almost killed me. Okay, now those of you that have never been crazy in that particular way, maybe you're like, what? What are you saying? But this is so true is that that which, quote, helped me to survive, eventually it almost destroyed me and almost killed me. So I had to come out of my means of survival. I had to come out of my dependency upon alcohol, my dependency upon people pleasing, my dependency upon myself so that I could be brought into full flaming dependency upon the Father. That has to happen inside of us. So we see though that Jesus never came out of dependency on the Father Therefore, though events might have wanted to traumatize him, they did not. Now, you have to actually believe that it is possible for you to live as Christ for anything I'm saying to have any meaning whatsoever. If you think all that's too high and mighty, too over-spiritualized, too hyper-spiritual, you know, spiritual, then you'll discount all of it rather than enter into it. And discipleship is the means of development for sons. It is the true, actual raising of the sons internally. So let's look at this aspect of developmental maturity markers. I don't know how many we'll get to today. Might just be one. Might just be an overview, and then I'll go deeper into them uh, in in, um, another podcast. So, you know, this is an amazing thing that we see that you know, Jesus came into the world as a, as a human being because there was Jesus the man, because there was the Son of God, the eternal Son of God, who, because it's their way of life, the Father's way of life, the Son's way of life, Holy Spirit's way of life, the Zoe life of God, This is the way the life of God lives. These are not strange ways that God has given for humans to live while he sits distant. No, God required of himself before he ever required of you. That's why it says to whom much is given, much is required. What was given? His life was given to you. At the new birth, his actual life came into your spirit and caused you to come alive to God. Then it says, now we are to behave and live our life in newness of life. you got to know your life source before you can begin to have the corresponding behavior and thinking that goes with it. So we see that 
when Jesus, if you will, when he was the eternal son of God, before he became the man, Jesus, says that he got up in Philippians 2, that he stripped himself of all of his rightful privileges as God, although he was equal with God. He did not consider it to be something that he would cling to, that he would grasp and no one could take it from him. It says that he considered it to be his free decision, that he could lay that down. Why? Now, this is very key. This is going to be key to everything about your maturity, is so as to fulfill the greater will of the Father. What did the Father really want? And when the Father wanted sons, many sons of glory, he said, and I want sons just like you. Let's just say they're sitting at the table and they're talking and the Father, God the Father, looks at God the Son and says, I'd like to have a whole more like you. I'd like to have a lot of other sons of glory like you. And he says, okay. So they offered that to man in the beginning in the garden in the via the tree of life, which is Jesus himself. But man said, no, I'd rather be God than be a son to God. And he chose the tree of independence, the tree of self-development. And trauma came in. I say this as often as I can without apology. Our core trauma is the fact that we are born separated from God himself. And then we're left to ourselves and what we can provide for ourselves. My friends, this is our core trauma. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady. Yet they would not give up their own plan. And they said, we're coming for our sons. So they guarded the way back to the tree of life, to the cross. And Jesus came as a man, did everything necessary to shut down the old and usher in the new. And so that required Jesus to live as the type of human being that God always desired. And so Jesus was born. And that required Holy Spirit. That required Holy Spirit to hover over Mary, to plant the incorruptible seed okay, within her. And that Jesus was born. And for the most part, as best we can see, it's not until he's of the age um, of 12 years old that we see him in Scripture. And on that particular day and in that particular set of circumstances, Jesus is in the temple and he's talking. And there's a pretty amazing conversations that are going on. He already knew that he needed to be about his father's business. So Jesus at the age of 12 had already awakened deeply and profoundly to uh, what he was really here for. Yet one of the most powerful things is that he was still able to submit to the authority of his parents so that there could be the continued growth that was completely necessary for him to be able to fulfill the fullness of his assignment. You see, he didn't say, well, at the age of 12, I can see it, therefore I must be ready. So, you know, hey, mom and dad, do what you got to do, but I've got to be about my father's business. So Jesus understood that a part of uh, his father's business was for him to submit to the continued growth that was necessary for the fulfillment of his assignment. Just because Jesus could see it and say it, didn't mean that he was fully ready internally. So he knew that he needed to go back home with them and submit to the full process of maturing and growing. You know, many of us, uh, whatever, quote, age we're at, we cannot um, submit to anybody once we've seen what we're called to. We see it, therefore we think we're ready. 
And what can happen is, as we start operating in some measure of, of our uh, calling, anointing, assignment, whatever you may want to call it, and nobody then can, nobody can tell you anything after that. This certainly happened to me. I was one year off the bar stool, and I'm telling you, my calling and anointing and my giftings began to erupt, and I got just a tiny little bit of encouragement, and my, my, my. I was off to the races, and the lifelong, um, the lifelong habit in in me of um, living two separate lives, publicly one life and privately another, kicked all into gear. Because now the ministry and the public works and all of that began to stunt my growth, because that's where I put my emphasis uh, was on the public. But you see, with Jesus, Jesus submitted to the private working within him. And he then spent another 18 years living everyday life, moving in dependency with the Father, growing, so that at the age of 30, when he stood up in the synagogue one day and read the scriptures and basically said, this is me, this is talking about me, all right, let me tell you, that's quite a bit of development that goes on, of developmental maturity markers. Let me tell you, you have to, you have to crawl before you walk. Did you know that children that do not crawl oftentimes have difficulty with their eye-hand coordination and fine motor skills? Because crawling has real purpose. And when you miss the crawling stage and you jump from just sitting to walking, sitting to running, then there are actual developmental markers that got missed. And then you're going to have to go back through some things to really get those fine motor skills developed. And many people in the body of Christ uh, have skipped a lot of development. So their giftings have kicked in, and they know how to publicly do things. And there's even fruit that's produced which is a part of what tells us everything must be okay, because look, people love what I'm saying. People hear me. People clap. People applaud. People come up and tell me how great I'm doing. So guess what? I start believing it. Well, if the core of my life is to be my deep private oneness with the Father, if that's missing, then my friends, what does it really matter that there's all this public fruit when there isn't the deep private uh, dependency that the Father is seeking after. So you see, this is where Jesus put his number one priority was his oneness with the Father. That's what he prayed for all of us in John 17. So when Jesus emerged at the age of 30, when he stood up and said, this scripture is speaking about me, he wasn't asking for anybody's vote. He wasn't there campaigning, saying, I need everybody here to agree with me, applaud me, like me. No, he just stood up and said what the Father had said. You see, Jesus' heart was so knit with the Father that that's what was the most important thing. That's why there could be days that Jesus could stand up and address the crowd, and then there were days where Jesus could just slip through the crowd when the crowd had turned on him and wanted to kill him prematurely. And so, you see, sometimes we're only willing to look like the heroes in front of the crowd. We're not willing to appear as a coward as we slip through the crowd and avoid a lot of the melee um, because that's what the Father has said. You see, Jesus came on assignment to fulfill the Father's will, not to please the people, not to do what people were pressuring him to do. And we are in days right now where many, many people are being pressured, I mean shamed, I mean provoked to have to say certain things, appease certain people, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of people on social media, and since I don't have that big a following, I guess I don't have to worry about these things. But I've seen them get on and make this big deal about, oh, I'm so nervous to say this because I know that there are going to be people that are upset, and I don't want to, and they hold up their hand and say, see, I'm shaking, you know, just to come on and talk to you about these things. I'm like, what? What is going on? You know, and as I listen, and I look behind, and I watch, and I observe... I'm like, what? what is happening? Where is this pressure coming from? 
You see, because when you are being pressured, okay, to have to say certain things, bow to certain things, it reminds me of when I've had people that I love in my life who have chosen to go away separate from God's way uh, to sin. Um, and they put pressure on me to come into agreement with them. Um, and I've had to recognize um, this spirit that comes that says, if you don't say what I'm telling you, if you don't bow to this, you know, then you don't really love me. I'm like, wow, that sounds so familiar. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what my abuser used to say to me when I was five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old while they were abusing me. Oh, I remember this hush of powerlessness that came over me when the only way to get any peace was to say what my abuser said, was to let my abuser do what he wanted to do to me. Like, wow, it looks different today. Oh, but it's the same spirit that's operating behind all of that. So I would no more bow to the pressure of normalizing sin than I would to bow to an abuser that wanted to abuse me again today. You see, this is very important that we not just live on the surface, but that we get deeper in and be sure to let what the Spirit is saying to us um, be what really is leading us. Because the Spirit is the Spirit of our Father. He's called the promise of the Father and He was sent and I've got to really lean into Him and depend upon Him more than anyone else. That's how Jesus lived. That was the only way that He was able to walk through the crowd, walk into face-to-face -face conversations with Pharisees. It's the only way He was able to have conversations with His closest uh, friends and disciples when they were attempting to pressure. That's why he could say to Peter face-to-face -face in pretty much a private conversation, look, Peter, Satan, get behind me. You, you need to back up because he was trying to say to Peter, man, you're, you're, you're paying attention and you're about the things of man, not the things of God. So Jesus was consistently having to discern in the people closest to him and the people coming against him, he was having to discern that really, when it all boiled down to it, it was all the same spirit coming against him. So you see, Jesus' development is what brought discernment. This is all connected. Your development isn't just so you can be this great evolved person. Your true developmental maturity markers are so that you can discern the things that lie ahead that are going to come at you and try to hit all the pressure points of your life uh, so as to get you off the mark, which is the Father. You see, sin came to uh, get you off the mark. Not, not the mark of good behavior, the mark of the Father. You know, they missed the mark in the garden. And my friends, if we're not careful, we're about to miss the mark again today because the power of sin comes to draw you away from full dependency upon the Father. It doesn't come to get you to misbehave. It comes to draw you away from the Father. Because if you stay with the Father, hell knows you're going to mature just like Jesus and then an entire company of maturing jealous sons, jealous for the Father's glory, they can't be stopped. They can't be moved. Hmm? They can't be duped. Oh, I guarantee you, hell hopes you hear this as just some little, oh, we all need to be discipled as some nice little program in church. No, no, we've been dummied down long enough. This is about you and me and all those whom we're sent to of truly maturing inwardly. So that's enough for today. So next episode, we'll take another aspect of Jesus's developmental maturity markers so that you will know, are you hitting your 
developmental maturity markers? Are you maturing? Or is everything that's going on today got you out trying to get from people what you want? People have got to understand. People have to see what they've done. Okay? So if you're not careful, you'll keep making people your source. Like you think people got to be woke so that you can be free. No, my friends, the liberation that you seek does not require anybody else to wake up and to see your trouble. Deep in, because those who are going to truly reform culture, influence culture, disciple nations, and really bring the true reform that's needed on every level, got to be one with Him inwardly and stop needing others to liberate you in that sense that you recognize that Jesus has come to liberate me and I need to let Him I need to let him, who required all of himself, I need to let him now give to me his life and let him require of me the same things that are required of himself so that we can get up and get on with the very assignment of our Father. All right? Well, that's enough for today. All right, so I pray that you will hear this, that you will uh, stay Uh, tuned in here at Tent Talk, and that we'll be able to keep walking into deeper levels of maturity together. All right? So until next time, I love you all. If you'd like information on how to book Nancy McCready for an event or speaking engagement, visit nancymccready.com.